All right, welcome guys. I'm gonna give you guys a little primer about how to name double bonds based on the EZ naming as opposed to the cis-trans naming. You're probably already familiar with cis and trans. When you have two different things connected to each carbon in a double bond, you have to tell people whether those two highest precedent or in most cases biggest groups are across from each other relative to the double bond or on the same side as each other across the double bond. If they're across from each other, it's trans. If they're on the same side of the double bond, it's cis. Well, when it comes to EZ naming, Z means cis and E means trans. Why do we have two different methods? Well, cis and trans is there and pretty easy when you only have one double bond for the whole molecule. Here, it's pent to ene. There's only one double bond, so clearly the cis refers to that. But what if you had three double bonds in the same molecule? This is the official way to name molecules that have more than one double bond. Ah, or, you know, one double bond is fine. You can still use the system. 3Z, 6Z, 8E, deca, 3, 6, 8, triene, one, all. What does this tell us? 10 carbon chain, with an OH group on carbon one. We have three double bonds. They start at carbons three, six, and eight. The double bond at carbon three is Z, which means cis. The carbon at, yeah, the double bond at carbon six is Z, which means cis. And the double bond starting at carbon eight is E, which means trans. So, let's draw the structural diagram for this molecule together. The first thing I'm gonna start with is a 10 carbon chain because it's deca. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna put my OH group on carbon one. That makes it deca one all. Now I need to start putting in double bonds, starting at carbons three, six, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are my three double bonds. And now I just need to fill in the rest of what's going on here according to the stereochemistry, like the trans and cis. So uh, we need to fill in hydrogens for all of carbon one and carbon two so that they both have four bonds. Now here's the tricky bit. Three is Z, Z means cis, which means when I put my hydrogens on here, I need to put them both on the same side of the double bond. Pretty straightforward. This carbon only has single bonds, so we'll fill it in with hydrogens. The double bond starting at carbon six is Z, which also means cis. These hydrogens could have both been down. It doesn't matter as long as they're both on the same side of the double bond. And, oh, and we're already at the next double bond, which is trans. And again, it doesn't matter if you go up, then down, or down, then up, as long as they're both on opposite sides of the double bond. And we've filled in our molecule. Take a look. Note that this carbon is probably sp2 hybridized and the bond angles are about 120 degrees. Now this doesn't look like it's 120 degrees because of the way that I've drawn it. What it probably ends up looking like is that we have an H and an H and then the rest of our carbon chain and the rest of our carbon chain. This green will do for our structural diagram for now though. If we were to draw the, uh, the, I don't know, I forget what it's called, you know, the stick diagram. One, two, three, and then we need a cis bond. Four, five, six, to seven, to eight, and then we need a trans. Take a look at how I've drawn my cis bonds. The carbon chain sticks out of both or the same side across the double bond for a cis, a cis, and they stick out of opposite sides for a trans. 
The only thing extra that I need here is my OH. And then this is the stick diagram for the molecule that I've drawn the structural diagram for here. Long story short, Z means cis, E means trans, and as long as you remember that it, and you have some clue what cis and trans mean, you should be fine. Hey, best of luck.